Welcome River Youth students. Thanks for joining us online again this week. We are so excited you are watching with us. Hey, a couple things to remind you of. Tonight after service, we are gonna break into our life groups on Zoom. So make sure you watch for your Zoom tag for your life group that will be listed in the public chat or on YouTube, wherever you're watching. But we prefer if you would watch at rvrythonline.church so we can talk and interact with you. Along with that, we will not have life groups this weekend because we're honoring and celebrating our seniors. We would love for you to come and join us to honor and celebrate our seniors by registering on our app, at the church app, or on the church website, or just give us a call, send us a direct message on Instagram so that we can get in touch with you and uh, let you know how you can register to be a part of our Senior Sunday Parade that'll happen at 1.30 right here at church, but we need you to register to be a part of that, and uh, it'd be awesome. We'd love to have you there and see you there. Uh, so enjoy the rest of this service as we get into worship here today. You will stay true Even when the lies come Your word remains true Even when my thoughts don't line up I will stand tall On each promise you made let the rest fade away there's a peace far beyond all understanding may it ever set my heart at ease dare anxiety come i'll remember that peace is a promise you keep peace is a promise you keep Hey River Youth, good to see you. My name is Pastor Dylan Patterson. Today I want to talk to you about something that I think is just really relevant right now. And uh, Paul compares our life to vessels. You can see here I've got a bunch of different vessels. And we're going to talk about what does our life carry? What do we bring with us wherever we go? And so in 2 Timothy, Paul writes, 
in chapter 2, verse 20 through verse 22, he says, Now in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and silver, but also of wood and clay. There are some for honorable use and some for dishonorable. Therefore, if anyone cleanses himself from what is dishonorable, he will be a vessel for honorable use, set apart as holy, useful to the master of the house, ready for every good work. Then in verse 22, he says, So flee youthful passions and pursue righteousness, faith, love, and peace, along with those who call on the Lord from a pure heart. So there's both vessels of honorable use and vessels of dishonorable use. And what Paul says makes the difference in their intention is what they have the difference in substance. You are a vessel. So my question is, what do you carry? What do I carry? The news has been full this week of different stories that are just really heartbreaking and they really make you think, what as a human do I carry? Am I a vessel of love and of, of faith or am I a vessel of hate and of fear? And so I want to dive into this a little bit. And here's the cool thing about vessels. Even an empty bowl or an empty pitcher holds something. It always holds potential. Uh, regardless of what else it holds, we always have this potential. You have the potential to hold something wonderful. You also have the potential to hold something dreadful. We have the potential to hold something that can make a difference in a positive way or can make a difference in a negative way. And so my question tonight is what is in your vessel? Are you a vessel for honorable use or are you a vessel for dishonorable use? Every vessel, no matter what it can hold, always holds potential. And here's the thing, there's both a serving bowl, you've got something like this, that's a serving bowl. Um, you can toss a salad in there, or you can uh, get a punch bowl, uh, and you can put a lot of great things in a serving bowl. Uh, there's also a toilet bowl. And uh, let me tell you what, I use that every single day. But I will tell you this, there's only one I'd rather drink out of. Uh, I definitely would rather eat my food out of a serving bowl rather than a toilet bowl. And um, here's the thing that I've learned. What you're made of is decided by the creator. You know, Paul says there's vessels of gold and silver, wood and clay. What you're made out of is decided by God. But what you carry is decided by you. Are you going to be a carrier of love or of hate, hope or despair, faith or fear? repentance or resistance, trust or worry, blessing or burden. Think about this. Jesus said in Matthew 11, Come to me, all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. What do you carry in your vessel? Is it something that maybe you need to give over to God? Is it something that shouldn't be in your control? I really believe this. God won't do a miracle with what I won't give him control over. Many times in our life, we feel like we need God to step in or help us in a certain way. But he can't do that unless we give that to him. Unless we say, God, you need to carry this rather than me. And some burdens are too great for us to carry. They must be given to God. You know, the pressures that we face as a society, the pressures you face every day, even when you open your phone and you're scrolling through whatever app you're on, there's a pressure that comes upon us. And so I want to challenge you. Is there things in your life that you feel like, man, I just need to give control over to God? Uh, Paul also says that we need to flee from the desires of the youthful passions. Or in another uh, place where Paul writes, he says this term, the flesh. And really what the flesh is, is, is just our own desires, our sinful desires, our uh, selfish desires over God's desires. In Romans 8, 5 and 6, Paul says, Those who live according to the flesh have their minds set on what the flesh desires. But those who live in accordance with the Spirit have their minds set on what, is, uh, what the Spirit desires. The mind governed by the flesh is death. But the mind governed by the Spirit is life and peace. I don't know about you, but in this time, I really need more life and more peace. And so I need to set my mind on what the Spirit is saying to me. It's, it's an important time to ask God, what are you speaking to me? Help me to be 
uh, sensitive to what your spirit is speaking, not to be focused on what my flesh wants. You know, my flesh, uh, when I wake up in the morning, I haven't had my coffee, haven't read my Bible yet. Man, I can, uh, you know, they have the saying, you woke up on the wrong side of the bed. I can be a, a pretty mean person in the morning if I don't listen to what the Spirit is saying. If I listen to what my selfish desires say, then man, I can be a real grump. Uh, just ask my wife, Mackenzie, she'll tell you. So he says, flee from the youthful passions. The, and what are those? What are the youthful passions? Well, he talks about lust, you know, greed, envy, jealousy, hatred, selfish ambition. Uh, I, I want to key on, on, on just a couple of those. Envy, that's a word you probably hear a lot, but what does that mean? It means to look at someone's life or look at someone's possessions and uh, it's like coveting their their stuff or their life. We look at someone's Instagram or we go on their social uh, media platform and we say, man, I want my life to be just like them. And we start to wish away our life for theirs. And we start to compare our life to the best parts of theirs and we become jealous and that can even lead to hatred you look at what someone has maybe it's success or maybe it's fame or they have uh sponsorships or they have these money money and they, and then you look at them and you start to envy them and that can lead toward hatred when we become selfish i think it's important to ask yourself does my love prefer others or is or is my love the love that i have just to make me feel good. You know, uh, I think it's important for those of you that are in relationships, ask yourself, does my love prefer the other people in in my friendship circles, in my relationships, or is it something that just makes me feel good? Do I just do it to make me feel better? And uh, the next thing Paul says, he says, pursue righteousness, faith, love, peace, along with those who call on the Lord with a pure heart. He's really begging us to lean into the fruit of the spirit uh, to live righteous, which means to be right in God's eyes, to do the right things for the right reasons. Uh, he encourages us to exercise our faith, to love others, to have peace. And peace is connected to hope. When we have peace, we are hopeful that God is going to make all things right. And then he says to live in community. He says, call on the Lord with those around you with a pure heart. He wants us to live in community. And uh, we're going to give you guys an opportunity in just a minute to hop on a Zoom life group and to practice living in community. We're going to have questions for you to discuss. There's a lot of hard questions, I think, that come with this idea that our life is a vessel. We carry something. Do we carry something that's loving? Or when our vessel gets uh, bumped or when, we, uh, when there's a storm in life and it spills out, what comes out of your vessel? Is it something that is uplifting or is it something that tears people down? You know, the news is full of stories of hate and of evil. I hope we as a church can rise above that. We can ask the hard questions. We can love people recklessly and we can show the world that we are who Christ says we are. We are people that love one another. And so I want to encourage you to jump on a life group right now. We're going to talk about a few questions in context of community. How do we pursue righteousness? How do we be vessels of hope and of love rather than a vessel that, that is full of despair, full of hatred? So join us on this life group. Look forward to seeing you soon.